You name it needs no uh, introduction. Max Kaiser of the Kaiser Report. And uh, Max, what's your uh, view on this? Is this thuggery or glorious revolution? Well, I mean, I see a connection, obviously, with um, what, what I've been calling the global insurrection against banker occupation. Uh, every city in different countries are, is going through this in different ways. So London is going through it differently than Athens or Tunis or Madrid or Dublin or, or even Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, but uh, when you have a society that valorizes looting, and this is covered actually in a book by Frederick Bastiat in 1850, who said, this was a post-French Revolution, he explained that when the privileged classes use the government for legalized plunder, that you encourage the lower classes to revolt using plunder. So what's happening in London is, on one hand, they're plundering, or you could say they're trying to get a job at Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan, because they are mimicking their overlords. They are mimicking what they see happening in their society. Why, why isn't Jamie Dimon, and why, isn't, uh, why aren't they down there trying to recruit these kids to be part of their bank? Because they're, they're, they're setting the example. Okay, well, Max, hold on a second. I thought I was going to disagree with you, but I actually totally agree. When you sent us an email saying, hey, Alex, you don't quite get it, I, you know, I, uh, now I do actually get it. And, and you're absolutely right. When we have giant prison populations and young people are thrown into them for almost no reason, they, they become part of the criminal culture and they see that the mega banks don't get in trouble. Uh, they see that there's no rule of law. Uh, they see that uh, the Formula One owner all over the world gets his racetracks paid for with taxpayer money, not just tax incentives, but actually gets paid. When they see his daughter getting $4 billion gift from him, uh, when they see trillions being stolen, when, when they see uh, all of this happening, uh, then they say, hey, uh, this is a criminal society, let's go for it. So, so if you're saying it from that perspective, I do agree with you. My only issue is they're going to use this now to further clamp down on everybody in England uh, by the police standing down. That's coming anyway, that because, um, because of this tension that's going on, this war, the war that I see, and I've been talking about it for 10 years, is be between the speculators who want interest rates at zero and people who have jobs or want to save money who want interest rates higher. Now, what did Ben Bernanke just say? He said he's going to keep interest rates near zero for another two years. This is plunder. This is unconscionable. This is causing enormous financial dislocation. It's a form of financial oppression, and I would go so far as to call it financial apartheid. Because in America, if you're part of the underclass, for example, they use interest rates to, to create the new Jim Crow laws or financial apartheid. If you're part of the elite, you get to borrow money at negative 2%. If you're borrowing money on a credit card, or a payday loan, you're borrowing money at 35 or 40 percent or higher, guaranteed to impoverish you. So they use interest rates like they used to use those Jim Crow laws. Or as you see in South Africa during the apartheid regime, they're creating through financial apartheid a permanent underclass. And keeping interest rates at zero percent is key. The Bernanke, see, these riots are horrible, of course, but let's not forget Bernanke and, and uh, Mervyn King, who's over there at the Bank of England, those guys are the master plunderers that these kids are mimicking. And they are getting away with incredible fraud and confiscation of wealth and plunder. And, and this is really what needs to be focused on. And it would be say to me, well, they're going to use this to clamp down and bring in more um, police state, et cetera. That trend is in, that, that train has left the station, Alex. No, nothing is going to stop that. Uh, and so you've got these uh, uprisings. Max, I agree countries. with you, but 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 if uh, let me tell you, you're not going to see stuff like that here in Austin, Texas, uh, because the people have a right and a duty to defend themselves. It can only happen in the New Yorks, the Chicago's, the Englands, where the people have been disarmed. But I agree with you, Max. I think this overall is a diversion. And uh, if these young people would have tried to attack the big mega banks, if they would have tried to go into parliament or into the royal palaces, then they would have been met with uh, not rubber bullets, but with leaden full metal jacket bullets instantly. So, so that's all you need to know right there is that they've been allowed to do this. 
because the social engineers think they're going to get uh, major power uh, out of it. But let's look at what's happening to the global markets. Uh, when you are breaking down the interest rates, uh, obviously that signifies they're going to continue to, de to devalue the dollar. We saw over the weekend uh, Greenspan tell Meet the Prostitutes on Meet the Press uh, that indeed uh, they'll just print money to pay off the debt. Well, that signifies hyperinflation. So where are we going, uh, Max Kaiser, uh, from your research? I mean, is the acceleration towards worldwide financial collapse uh, accelerating, or, or where are we on the chart? I'll tell you where exactly we're going. We're going toward something called negative interest rates. Uh, the Swiss are now charging people to keep money at their bank, and a bank in America is now charging their highest uh, deposit uh, customers a, a charge of keeping cash at the bank, which is a negative interest rate. So if you keep your money at the bank at the end of the year, you're going to have 1% or 2% less of it. The bank is just going to take it from you. And they'll say that the reason they're doing this is you need to put your money into the stock market to get this economy going. And again, that's a form of financial oppression uh, or financial apartheid. And let me add to this. Federal courts have now ruled even $1,000 at your home with a bank receipt can be confiscated. So you keep it here, we take it. Uh, and if you keep it at home, we take it. I mean, this is con incredibly lawless, and it's all designed while they're stealing your money via inflation uh, on top of it. I mean, th this is absolute war against everyone but the big six mega banks uh, who literally get the tens of trillions of taxpayer bailout money to themselves and then hoard it. I mean, this is an economic global takeover. How do we counter them, Max? writing on the wall, the people on your show, Gerald Salente, um, Peter Schiff, Mark Fopper, Max Kaiser, you get on the list. What have we been saying? Gold is the only non-corruptible form of money, and of course it's breaking out, hitting new all-time highs as we speak, and that is going to continue. It's actually melting up at this point, because the realization that these types of uprisings that you're seeing around the world, including London, they're just going to spread, and they're just going to keep getting more and more out of control. I mean, you can't, once the genie's out of the bottle, you can't go back and say, well, your, your uprisings are in London, we'd like you to wear a different color, we'd like you to rearrange the furniture and can you do it can you quiet down a little bit because you're disturbing the peace i mean once the genie's out of the bottle you don't know how it's going to manifest in different cultures you say it's not going to happen in the united states like it's happening in london that's correct but it will happen then it's going to happen in a different way just like it's happened differently in all these other countries but it's a global insurrection they're part of that global insurrection i know that um in the uk and the bbc and these other uk press outlets that they are loath to refer to it as having any political component whatsoever but that is to be blind to what's happening around the world as this lead banking cartel it confiscates wealth and brings about this financial apartheid and a permanent underclass and this it's it's causing these this this these upri these uprisings everywhere this is just another chapter another example of something that's been in place now for the last three years and it's only going to grow how you know in madison wisconsin they had a bit of an uprising very peaceful they tried to kick out scott walker who was imposing financial apartheid uh they failed uh, so but it'll pop up somewhere else and what form it takes we don't quite know yet but it will happen in some form uh, the revolution in Egypt is ongoing. Uh, the revolution in Tunisia is ongoing. The people in uh, Dublin uh, have yet to show their true hand, how they're going to deal with their financial oppression. The people in Greece, the same thing. But this is all, we're all together now because the global banking cartel has instituted negative interest rates, which means that you will never, ever accumulate any wealth whatsoever, and they've legalized confiscation of wealth. They've completely legalized plunder. So when you look at kids plundering in London, and they're saying, oh, my God, look at these kids. Yeah, it's terrible. But what about Goldman Sachs? What about J.P. Morgan? They do it on a No, I hear you, Max. It's, it's, uh, your audio is kind of degenerating. Are you on a speakerphone? No, I'm not. I'm on my landline. Uh, I don't know why it's degenerating. I don't know. Does it sound any better? Uh, are you on a headset? No. It's just kind of. Try back on this line or my cell phone. 
No, it's just kind of watery. We'll, we'll call the cell phone during the break. I, I just really want to hear what you have to say. Uh, well, well, Max, where does it go? Because the banks give themselves trillions in interest-free or negative money. Then, for everybody who isn't being given the free money, it destroys those of us uh, that work for it. They've obviously premeditatedly done this. They built a giant uh, police state uh, in place to protect this conversion from a free market society to a crony uh, insider uh, monopoly system. Uh, and they're getting ready their new wars. Uh, what do you make of S&P, who certified all the derivatives garbage for the banks knowingly, paid by them, coming in and uh, getting rid of the AAA rating of the U.S.? The states now having their ratings lowered, the counties, the cities, uh, all to the very zombie banks. Our ratings are cut to them who are the most insolvent, most fraudulent out there as the only sector in the economy uh, that's doing well is the insiders, the General Electrics uh, who are exempt from the laws they get passed, the mega banks who are exempt from the laws they get passed. I mean, how long can this go on? Or is it too sophisticated for the fluoride head population? Are we doomed? Look, Wall Street is always looking for new sources of revenue. Okay, we understand that. They created subprime, which is toxic waste uh, paper to make oodles of money off of fraud. And then they blew that market up. They're always looking for new ways. What they figured out is that the U.S. Treasury bond market, which is triple A, is huge, but you can't make a lot of money on it because it's triple A, and the spreads and the liquidity and the volatility is very low. So by S&P lowering the rating of the U.S. Treasury bond, you now have volatility and these increased spreads. This is great for Wall Street because they make money on the chaos and the confusion, and that rate will continue to go down because as it goes down, it creates huge amounts of volatility and trading and commissions for Wall Street. This is another avenue for Wall Street to create huge amounts of revenue and bonuses by trashing the uh, U.S. AAA rating and, and moving it down to a lesser rating, which means it'll become like a junk bond. So it's constantly up and down. You see the volatility in the last three days as a result. This is exactly what I said would happen, that volatility would increase. And, this and is that's exactly because the insiders... Huge, too. 300, 400 point days. Yeah. Who do you think makes money with that? Wall Street. Why do you think 